the hidden secret of the Nave, and the tragic backstory of the current Nave Arlecchino. This fan-made trailer perfectly depicts all of that. We're going to break it down, as well as some leaks and what we could potentially see from the current Nave in Genshin's story. It's criminally underrated, and I'll post a link in the description. But every reliable leak unanimously is saying that Arlecchino is coming in 4.6 as a playable character, possibly a weekly boss, so she will have some sort of redeeming arc if she's going to be playable. Starting with the House of the Hearth, because we don't have a ton of information on it, but we have enough to know that grooming children and indoctrinating them into the Fatui Harbingers organization, being brainwashed from a very young age as loyal soldiers, as depicted, they're doing IQ tests, combat training, they're all just lifeless shells, because that is their entire purpose. It's less of an orphanage and more of like a farm for soldiers or for the doctor and his experiments. Who knows what they do with these kids? And being the most powerful organization in Teyvat, I'm sure this happens on a very grand scale all across every nation. But the House of the Hearth has had two knaves that we know of. The old knave and our current one. And our current knave not really being that old, but yet she's the fourth Fatui Harbinger. So somewhere along the way, she must have got some insane power-ups or something. Or she just took the place of the previous Knave because the previous Knave was a member of the Harbingers, the House of the Hearth already established. Otherwise, why would she be ranked so high? But just going off of characters and how they speak about her, Tartalia, how he speaks about her, and the Wanderer, we can sort of depict how she's going to defect and betray the Harbingers. I've got nothing against people who have their own agendas. I myself joined the Fatui to get more experience in combat. But I don't like her at all. If she stood to benefit from betraying others, she'd turn against the Tsaritsa in a heartbeat. The trailer depicts her early on with her family as a kid, innocent, with her loving parents, which is a nice contrast because that is something heavily speculated on for years now that the House of the Hearth deliberately creates orphans out of thin air to bolster their forces, to have more kids at their disposal, to train and groom. So why wouldn't Arlecchino be one of them? And you can sort of see depicted how they go through the training regimen, bringing the kids up. The old previous knave was known to be a terrible person. Confirmed in the game, she was known to be extremely cruel and despised failure, and would inflict extremely painful punishments to those that failed their missions. And I have no doubt she would discard children that maybe didn't pass the test, their IQ wasn't high enough, their combat skills lacked, as we can see depicted in this fan trailer as well. Obviously, not every kid's gonna make it. Freeman, Lene, and Lenetti confirmed this. But confirmed several years ago, she clashed with a child of the House of the Hearth, who ended up succeeding her as the current Arlecchino, which is the knave that we see in Fontaine today. And you can sort of see her transition, her cursed hands. Somewhere along the way, she lost herself and seeing the cruel world and what it is. Losing her parents, losing everything, seeing how kids are treated and fellow orphans, no doubt she lost a part of herself. And you can see the moment that she snaps. And not hard to read between the lines that she killed the previous knave. Everybody that's been under the current knave says that life's a lot better, she cares about the children, everyone's treated fairly and well, and for the most part, whether this is intentional or not, that's just going to make for loyal followers and loyal kids. They all regard her as father now. But that still begs the question, how on earth is she the fourth Fatui Harbinger being somebody so young? What kind of power up and curse did she accept, have to take? in order to accomplish this. Is her true intentions pure? Does she have the children of the House of the Hearth's best interest at heart? Or is she ultimately just a sleeper agent for the Fatui Harbingers, only this time the approach is to earn everyone's trust? It's hard to say exactly, but I think the fact that she's going to be playable suggests that she will defect from the Harbingers, and Tartalia also sort of says this already. Scatamooch also mentions she's a wolf in sheep's clothing. This could mean a lot of things. This could mean that she's just a wolf in sheep's clothing to whoever she sees as an enemy, or that the people that trust her the most, like the children, shouldn't trust her so much. It's really hard to say. But it is confirmed that she was an orphan at one time, not that long ago, so she would have, at least for the most part, some empathy towards the children there. And she did genuinely seem to care about Fontaine for the most part. And just going off of what we have to go off of now, it is safe to assume that she will defect from the Harbingers to become playable. 
And I think the Fatui needing these children and, and orphans being indoctored into, into the organization is what's going to be the final straw. The current knave has not been the knave for terribly long, so I'm sure she's been planning her exit from the Fatui for a while now. It was also leaked that she will have blood magic and be a sword pyro wielder, and we can see she has a pyro vision. I would love to know the extent of her power up and how she got it, whether it be through abyssal magic, corruption, linked with the Narsus and Croins, but either way, the old knave would have been a high-ranking harbinger, and I'm sure the fact that she slayed the previous harbinger, clearly, was enough for the other harbingers in the organization to accept her as the new knave and just take on the old knave's position as fourth harbinger. I'm sure defeating the fourth harbinger earns you the position of the fourth harbinger. That would explain her ranking at such a young age. As far as how we'll see her in the story, I have an interesting theory. I don't know this to be true or not. A lot of people seem to think that we're going to have a boss battle with the knave. So we'd have to have some sort of conflict with her. She'd have to do something bad. And then we'd have some redeeming arc, kind of like Scatamooch, after the fact. But what if? Because we still have another harbinger from Fontaine, yet to see, Sandrone. What if the knave has slowly been planning to defect from the harbingers and Sandrone steps in with all of her mechanical automatons and that is the kind of story that we're going to see. It would be interesting because we still have to see the seventh harbinger and if the knave is planning to defect like hinted at, then that would make for the perfect story. And the seventh harbinger would actually be the perfect person to go up against the knave. The knave will have many followers that are loyal to her. If she defects from the harbingers, they would follow her. But Sandrone probably has an entire army of mechanical beings and machines. So she would actually be a perfect person to have go up against the current knave, Arlecchino. But that is just a pure theory. Honestly, it's hard to say exactly how this story will unfold, but it is pretty well guaranteed she's coming in 4.6. So one way or another, we're going to see how she defects from the Harbingers. She seems to care about the children for the most part. The only thing that leaves us vague is the fact that Gatimuts tells us she's a wolf in sheep's clothing. That's the only thing that makes me feel uneasy about this character. Maybe the House of the Hearth was always this promised Neverland type organization and she saved it. And the Fatui are a threat to the children at the end of the day. They're all tools. I mean, being the knave for only three or four years and being the fourth harbinger taking the old knave spot is not long at all. Not nearly long enough. Undeniably loyal to the Fatui's cause, most of those members are like 500 plus years old. She is by far probably the youngest there, or Tartalia, one of the two, yet she's ranked so high and she has such influence and her organization plays a key part in the entire Fatui organization. So for her to defect would be a great loss. It's not just her diplomatic skills, her power, her insane high ranking and strength, her stealth, her diplomatic abilities they would lose. They would lose all that she brings, the children, the future soldiers, the numbers, which allows them to embed themselves and control and influence every nation in Tevat simultaneously. That would be such a hit to the Fatui. So it's interesting to see how this is going to play out. But I do think it was an interesting way to depict her past with her parents because at one point she would have had parents and they would have had to die for her to become an orphan in the first place. And the fact that she was able to defeat the fourth harbinger and take her place is insane at that young age. But with our Lachino release in 4.6, we will get some voice lines on the other harbingers and her opinion on the Fatui in general. I cannot wait all the lore we're going to get with that, but I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts on the Knave situation what you think's gonna play out, and what might happen. Are we ever gonna see Sandrone and Fontaine? I'm really wondering at this point. I really hope so. I think that'd be a great way to introduce her. We haven't fully had some Harbinger on Harbinger action yet, so that would be interesting. But thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, we will see you all in the next one. Later.